to us a bit about the importance of participating in a sport in high school, and specifically what your high school track and field experience was like. Well, I um, am a Pine Ridge Puma for life, and uh, my first year in high school, I, I dropped out of track. I didn't want to compete at all. So I kind of feel like I shortchanged myself. But when I finally went up for the team in grade 10, um, looking back, my experience was great because of the coaches we had, Miss Masseos and Mark Blanchfield. So the coaches that we had really created a community with us um, at Pine Ridge Secondary School. Um, and I remember we had some pretty intense rivalries, and that's what I really relish looking back at, is the rivalries that we had, um, the school pride that we developed in high school. We had a huge, intense rivalry with Lieberman, until to this day, we still can't forgive them for winning, you know, we can't, like, ah. But um, to this day, like, I love that kind of intensity that we were able to build there, but um, looking back now, those were some of the, the really innocent prime years for, like, learning to be competitive, learning to be um, just really aggressive and just, you know, train well and train properly. Excellent. Alicia, over to you. Um, just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about uh, if you had an opportunity to participate in an event such as the Nike High School Grand Prix when you were in high school back in the day, what would it have meant for you to compete against athletes uh, from across the country in an event such as this? I actually think it's a really great opportunity for all the high school athletes. I think back to when I was in high school and in Ontario, also is like the biggest thing. It's kind of like the Olympics in high school. So I think having something where it's like the whole country, it's not just the whole province, it creates a new rivalry where you get to compete against all of Canada and uh, just to see what else other athletes are doing. So definitely a really great opportunity. Perfect. Priscilla, over to you. Could you share with us and the audience here today a favorite memory or two from your uh, high school track and field experience? Uh, for me, in high school, it was really neat. Uh, my club, my coach, Anthony, we decided to go actually to a similar event um, called National Scholastics, and it's in the States. And to have that actually being brought up here in Canada, the opportunity just to go out and compete against other kids and rivalries against and just building up, you know, the love for the sport and the, the drive to get better, to push yourself to strive to to go after records was really neat because I went out there and I was actually able to break a record there and then to have to see that this is coming to Canadian soil. It's just, you know, one of the next things they're doing that's going to better, you know, the sport, going to better our kids and it's going to better everything all around in, in Canada because we have kids from all over. There's 300, you know, kids being able to take part in this opportunity for the first time and hope to see it expands in years to come. Perfect. Uh, Rita, can you talk to me about your drive to train to reach a higher level of track and field when you were in high school? And did you know that you wanted to be in the Olympics, a big stage at such a young level? Yeah, I probably didn't have the typical, you know, high school fantasies when I was young because I went to track and field because my mom kept bugging and nagging me to go um, after I dropped out. So it was simply to appease Kathy, uh, Kathy Mo. And so once I did get there and I was involved, I realized that there was this network, this kind of small family that where none of us really wanted to um, fail each other. So there was a really much a camaraderie where while well, they're holding me to this level and my teammates are depending on me, and it's something that I kind of miss being kind of individual and international, really that, that team um, pride, that aspect of it. But looking back, no fantasies about the Olympics, world championships, things like that. I probably couldn't tell you when they went to school, how many years they were at. So um, for me, you know, it wasn't. I think that was probably good because then once I got to the professional level, there was just a lot more hunger and desire because there was no pressure in high school. Felicia, over to you. Uh, balancing academics and athletics is a challenge at any level. Can you tell us some of your strategies that you use to stay on top of both, especially when you're in high school? Um, I'm actually lucky because my dad's a teacher, so the importance of education is always stressed to me. And, um, and I have aspirations before to med school, so uh, academics has always been a really important thing to me. Um, I think track actually, or being involved in a sport in itself helps to an ath a young athlete especially focus and uh, learn time management skills. The discipline that you have uh, while you're doing a sport helps you in all aspects of your life, but I think the biggest for me thing for me when I was in high school was uh, using my agenda. I mean, I know teachers talk about it all the time and kids try to rebel against it, but you know, planning out your time and planning when to do things definitely was a big thing for me and a big strategy that I used. I'll vouch and I still use my agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Priscilla, last question over here to you. Um, obviously with the lineup of uh, Nike sponsored athletes, Michael Jordan, Lance Armstrong, the, the list goes on and on. Could you tell us what it's like to be a Nike sponsored athlete and everything that goes with that role? Well, everything that goes with it, I mean, it's just an honor to actually be, you know, an athlete that represents Nike, represents Canada, represents my hometown, Whitby, and to go out there and you know be able to you know get the gear 
that helps me to perform like those spikes. I'm a, a, a fan of the R2s and I love the lyric lines. And just to be able to come out here and show kids if you work hard, you dream big, you have big aspirations, like something like this, you know, can happen to you. And it's just like Felicia the other day, you know, she's coming up and now, you know, you're a Nike athlete also. And before me, Perdita was a Nike athlete. So to push and strive and to keep building and going after dreams and knowing that Nike's behind us to support us and push us with phenomenal gear. They're always trying to come up with something new and creative and that's basically going to help you later on in a positive way, whether the shoes are lighter or the gear. You know, you have a jacket that can reflect off the light and rain and everything. Just, I don't know, they come up with some really good ideas in the kitchen there and <laughs> it's phenomenal to just be a part of the team and to keep striving and pushing to be better and to be a role model for the younger kids that are coming up and looking up to us and being like, yeah, it's amazing. We're, we're very grateful for all the support that we get from them. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, ladies. We really appreciate hearing all your insight. It's a real honor and a pleasure to have all three of you here with us today. Thank you.